Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Shweta, junior resident at Tata Memorial Center, Mumbai. And uh, today we'll be doing a case series on a relatively unusual topic. So this is uh, dissemination of low-grade gliomas, expecting the unexpected. So low-grade gliomas, grade 1 and 2, are the most common primary CNS neoplasms in children. These include tumor families, according to the WHO 2021 classification. Pediatric type diffuse low-grade gliomas, circumscribed astrocytic gliomas, which are purely grade 1 tumors mostly, glioneuronal and neuronal tumors. So these uh, low-grade gliomas are generally benign, but may show slow progression to a higher grade. These have been seen in association with the NF1 syndrome. Sporadically, they can have an alteration in the BRAF gene. And the type of uh, variations include BRAF fusion and B600E point mutations. So these have prognostic implications. Uh, tumors with BRAF fusion and NF1 syndrome associated generally have favorable outcomes. B600E point mutation has a higher risk of progression and transformation. Now, leptomeningeal dissemination is something that is mostly seen with higher grade tumors. And it is quite rare in low grade gliomas with an occurrence of less than 5% reported in literature. Here we review four cases of disseminated low grade gliomas, all of them being grade one pyrocytic astrocytomas at our institute. So let's move on to case one. So this is a 13-year-old male child with multiple episodes of vomiting and headache. Uh, so a MRI was done which showed a solid cystic lesion in the posterior fossa extending into the left cerebellar hemisphere. The solid component was T2 intermediate and it showed nodular post-contrast enhancement with some blooming on SWI. So uh, when we were screening uh, in the post-contrast sequences, we saw there was enhancement along the fourth ventricle and the medulla which prompted us to screen the spine further. We found nodular enhancing deposits along the cervical, uh, dorsal, and the lumbar cord. So near total resection of the fourth ventricular SOL and the leptomeningeal nodule in the fourth ventricle was done. And that showed a pilocytic astrocytoma, WHO grade 1, however, with a leptomeningeal deposit. This tumor was beta fusion positive, which if you recall earlier, I mentioned was prognostically of a uh, relatively good, uh, which was prognostically relatively good. However, still uh, he had a leptomeningeal deposit. Post-surgery, uh, residual disease was still present and chemotherapy was given. Post-chemotherapy, we can see that the deposits have shrunk in size. So this patient is currently still on follow-up and on chemotherapy. Case number two is a three-year-old child with headache and vomiting. She had a a uh, large supracellular lobulated mass, which was uh, T2 hyperintense, isointense on T1, and showed homogeneous post contrast enhancement. She underwent subtotal excision of the super, uh, supracellular tumor, and that came as pilocytic astrocytoma, again grade 1, with BRAF fusion positive. She was started on tramitinib, which is a MAP kinase inhibitor, which is a targeted therapy for the BRAF fusion protein, and was kept on follow up. However, on follow-up, she developed paresthesias for which screening of the spine was done. Screening spine relieve, uh, revealed uh, enhancing deposits along the subarachnoid space uh, in the uh, dorsal and in the lumbar regions. Wincristine-based chemotherapy regimen was added and this patient is still on follow-up and uh, needs to be reassessed. Case number three is a six-year-old girl child with a supracellular mass. It's a, a large solid cystic uh, midline mass with heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. Biopsy was done, which showed a pilocytic astrocytoma, which was both a uh, 600E uh, point mutation and fusion negative. So that means it was a BRAF wild type tumor. Chemotherapy was given for a year. Size was stable and hence she was kept on observation. However, during the observation period, she developed lower limb pain for which we did an MRI spine. So what we noticed was this thin sheet-like enhancement along the whole of the spinal cord. Craniospinal irradiation was just done and uh, resolution of enhancement was observed with improvement of symptoms. So here we can see that the enhancement which is observed earlier has resolved and she has had stable disease since then and is currently on observation. Fourth case is a 37-year-old 37 37 -year female 
an adult patient, which is relatively uncommon for a pilocytic astrocytoma. She presented with complaints of headache. MRI showed a lesion in the third ventricle and she was operated outside. However, it does a subtotal resection. So we can see in the MR that there was a solid cystic tumor in the supracellar region and the third ventricle, which was persistent. And the HPR was, as I mentioned earlier, pilocytic astrocytoma, which was BRAF negative. She, however, had recurrent headache uh, after a month for which whole ventricular irradiation was done. Post-radiation, uh, MRI brain and a screening of spine was done, which showed a nodular enhancing deposit along the cauda equina. Uh, so that means she progressed on chemotherapy and uh, currently she is on palliation. So with all these cases, we observe that these are all low-grade tumors, but we still see leptomeningeal dissemination. So this is something we have to keep in mind. Leptomeningeal dissemination is infrequent and can occur at any time during the course of the disease with prognostically worsening outcomes. Diagnosis is difficult unless we have a strong suspicion and we carefully review the imaging. Risk factors for this remain unclear. Factors proposed include empanimal invasion, proximity of the tumor to the ventricles, and intraoperative ventricular entry. Diencephalic location has been reported in literature to have a predisposition to leptomeningeal spread. There is no consensus on the most effective treatment yet, but generally uh, these deposits are managed with chemotherapy. So the learning points in this presentation include dissemination is generally seen with high-grade tumors, but can rarely occur even in grade 1 tumors. Suspicion of metastasis and prompt imaging should be done when uh, the patient presents with symptoms like backache, paresthesia, and limb weakness. We require a careful review of the post-contrast flare sequences to rule out leptomeningeal dissemination in the brain. Thank you.